Hare Krishna, everybody. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. It's becoming our life and soul, and the life and soul of a lot of others. And Srila Prabhupada is glowing with happiness. Hare Krishna. We're here in Houston at Radha Lane. Yes, you can even send a package if you like. It's a real address. It's not just made up. They did a nice thing. They made it an actual part, you know, an address right down the street from Sri Sri Radha Nilamadava's temple in this showcased community, which is just about to get even more so. Hare Krishna. And uh, welcome to all of you out there in cyberspace. Uh, we're going deeper into Kapila Dev's teachings. Uh, but before we do, we're going to read, as usual, every day, Srila Sanatana Goswami's prayer glorifying the Srimad Bhagavatam. He wrote a book called Sri Krishna Lila Stava, and it was a very he he wrote this book after he wrote the Brihad Bhagavatamrita. And it it's meant to be a very simple Sanskrit and just not very much detail, but telling the, the, the Krishna Lila story of Vrindavan Lila. And it's meant to just jog the memory, you know, and it and it and it's designed to offer 108 obeisances to the Krishna Lila in Vrindavan, and this these verses, short book, just 500 verses or less, four, 412 to 416, are the 107th obeisance that he's offering, and it's to the Srimad Bhagavatam <coughs> it, itself. And it goes like this. Sarva Shastabdi Piyusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drikprada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kalidvan Doditaditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshaksharayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka Bando Matsangin Madguro Man Mahadana Manishtadakamad Bhagya Mat Ananda Namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu Saduta Dayan Atini Chochata Kada Hanamun Chagadachin Mam Premna rit kanta O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna Dr. Damodar Nice to see you again Hare Krishna Text 26 Chapter 32 Adverse Activities Adverse No Well, What's the name of it again? Entanglement in fruitive activities. Okay. 
text 26. The Supreme Personality of Godhead alone <clears throat> the Supreme Personality of Godhead alone is complete transcendental knowledge. But according to the different processes of understanding, he appears differently, either as impersonal Brahman, as Paramatma, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or as the Purusha Avatar, purport. The word Drishadibi, Drishadibihi, is significant. According to Jiva Goswami, come over here, Sarva. This this is tailor made. Holy Krishna. The word Drishyadi B is significant. According to Jiva Goswami, Drishi means jnana, philosophical research. By different processes of philo philosophical research under different concepts such as the process of Jnana Yoga, the same Bhagavan, or Supreme Personality of Godhead, is understood as impersonal Brahman. Similarly, by the Eightfold Yoga system, he appears as the Paramatma. But in pure Krishna consciousness, or knowledge in purity, when one tries to understand the Absolute Truth, one realizes him as the Supreme Person. The transcendence is realized simply on the basis of knowledge. The words used here, paramat maishwara puman, are all transcendental, and they refer to Supersoul. Supersoul is also described as Purusha, but the word Bhagavan directly refers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is full of six opulences, wealth, fame, strength, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. He is the personality of Godhead in different spiritual skies. The various descriptions of Paramatma, Ishwara, and Puman indicate that the expansions of the Supreme Godhead are unlimited. Ultimately, to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one has to accept Bhakti Yoga. By executing Jnana Yoga or Dhyana Yoga, one has to eventually approach the Bhakti Yoga platform. And then Paramatma, Ishwara, Puman, etc. are all clearly understood. It is recommended in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam that what, what, whether one is a devotee or a fruity factor or liberationist, if he is intelligent enough, he should engage himself with all seriousness in the process of devotional service. It is also explained <clears throat> that whatever one desires, which is obtainable by fruitive activities, even if one wants to be elevated to higher planets, can be achieved simply by execution of devotional service. Since the, devotional Lord, since the Supreme Lord is full in six opulences, He can bestow any one of them upon the worshiper. The one Supreme Personality of Godhead reveals himself to different thinkers as the Supreme Person or Impersonal Brahman or Paramatma. Impersonalists merge. Impersonalists merge into the Impersonal Brahman, but that is not achieved by worshipping the Impersonal Brahman. If one takes to devotional service and at the same time desires to merge into the existence of the Supreme Lord, he can achieve that. If someone wants, if someone desires at all to merge into the existence of the Supreme, he has to execute devotional service. The devotee can see the Supreme Lord face to face, but the jnani, the empiric philosopher, and the yogi cannot. They, can, they cannot be elevated to the positions of associates of the Lord. There is no evidence in the scriptures stating that by cultivating knowledge or worshipping the impersonal Brahman, one can become a personal associate of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Nor by executing the yogic principles can one become an associate 
of the Supreme Godhead. Impersonal Brahman, being formless, is described as Adrisha because the impersonal effulgence of Brahma Jyoti covers the face of the Supreme Lord. Some yogis see the four-handed Vishnu sitting within the heart and therefore in their case also the Supreme Lord is invisible. Only for the devotees is the Lord visible. Here the statement Drisha DB is significant. Since the Supreme Personality of Godhead is both invisible and visible, there are different features of the Lord. The Paramatma feature and Brahman feature are invisible, but the Bhagavan feature is visible. In the Vishnu Purana, this fact is very nicely described. The universal form of the Lord and the formless Brahman effulgence of the Lord being invisible are inferior features. The concept of the universal form is material and the concept of impersonal Brahman is spiritual. But the highest spiritual understanding is the personality of Godhead. The Vishnu Purana states, Vishnur Brahma Sarupena Swayam Eva Vibhastitaha Hare Krishna Hare Bo. Everybody scoot, scoot down, scoot closer. Yeah, make some more space. <coughs> Hare Krishna. The Vishnu Purana states, Vishnu Brahma Sarupena Swayam Eva Vivastitaha. Brahman's real feature is Vishnu or the Supreme Brahman is Vishnu. Swayam Eva, that is his personal feature. The Supreme Spiritual Connection is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Yad Gatva Nani Vartante Tad Dhamma Paramam Mama. That specific abode is called Paramam Mama. That specific abode called Paramam Mama is the place from which, at once, attain, once one attains it, one does not return to this miserable, conditional life. Every place, every space, and everything belongs to Vishnu. <coughs> but where he personally lives is Taddhama Paramam, this is his supreme abode. One has to make one's destination the supreme abode of the Lord. 27. The greatest common understanding for all yogis is complete detachment from matter, which can be achieved by different kinds of yoga. Purport. There are three kinds of yoga, namely bhakti yoga, jnana yoga, and ashtanga yoga. Devotees, jnanis, and yogis all try to get out of the material entanglement. The jnanis try to detach their sensual activities from material entanglement, engagement. The jnani yogi thinks that matter is false and that Brahman is truth. He tries, therefore, by cultivation of knowledge to detach the senses from material enjoyment. The Ashtanga yogis also try to control the senses. The devotees, however, try to engage the senses in the service of the Lord. Therefore, it appears that the activities of the bhaktas, devotees, are better than those of the jnanis and yogis. The mystic yogis simply try to control the senses by practicing the eight divisions of yoga, niyama, yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, etc. And the jnanis try by mental reasoning to understand that sense enjoyment is false. But the easiest and most direct process is to engage the senses in the service of the Lord. The purpose of all yoga is to detach one's sense, one sense activities from this material world. The final aims, however, are different. Jnanis want to become one with the Brahman effulgence. Yogis want to realize Paramatma 
and devotees want to develop Krishna consciousness and develop and transcendental loving service to the Lord. That loving service is the perfect stage of sense control. The senses are actually active symptoms of life and they cannot be stopped. They can be detached only if there is superior engagement. As it is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Param Drishtva Nivartate. The activities of the senses can be stopped if they are given superior engagements. The supreme engagement is engagement of the senses in the service of the Lord. That is the purpose of all yoga. Text 28 Those who are averse to the trans transcendence realize the supreme absolute truth differently through speculative sense perception. And therefore, because of mistaken speculation, everything appears to them to be relative. Purport The Supreme Absolute Truth, the Personality of God, it is one, and He is spread everywhere by His impersonal feature. This is clearly expressed in Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna says, Everything that is experienced is but an expansion of my energy. Everything is sustained by him, but that does not mean that he is in everything. Sense perceptions, such as oral perception of the sound of a drum, visual perception of a beautiful woman, or perception of the del delicious taste of a milk preparation by the tongue, all come through different senses and are therefore differently understood. Therefore, sensory knowledge is divided in different categories, although actually everything is one as a manifestation of the energy of the Supreme Lord. Similarly, the energies of fire are heat and illumination, and by these two energies fire can, can display itself in many varieties or in diversified sense perception. Mayavadi philosophers <clears throat> declare this diversity to be false. But Vaishnava philosophers do not accept the different manifestations as false. They accept them as non-different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead because they are a display of His diverse energies. The philosophy that the Absolute is true and this creation is false, Brahma Satyam, Jigan Mitya, is not accepted by Vaishnava philosophers. The example is given that although all that glitters is not gold, that does not mean that a glittering object is false. For example, an oyster shell appears to be golden. This appearance of golden hue is due only to the perception of the eyes, but that does not mean that the oyster shell is false. Similarly, by seeing the form of Lord Krishna, one cannot understand what he actually is, but this does not mean that he is false. The form of Krishna has to be understood as it is described in the, in the books of knowledge, such as Brahma Samhita, Ishvara, Parama Krishna, Satchirananda, Bigra. <coughs> Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, has an eternal, blissful, spiritual body. By our imperfect sense perception, we cannot understand the form of the Lord. We have to acquire knowledge about Him. Therefore, it is said here, Jnanam Ekam. Bhagavad Gita confirms that there are fools who simply upon seeing Krishna consider Him a common man. They do not know the unlimited knowledge, power, and opulence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Material sense speculation leads to the conclusion that the Supreme is formless. It is because of such mental speculation that the conditioned soul remains in ignorance under the spell of illusory energy. The Supreme Person has to be understood by the transcendental sound vibrated by Him in Bhagavad Gita, wherein He says that there is nothing superior to Himself the impersonal Brahman 
effulgence is resting on his personality. <coughs> the purified, absolute vision of Bhagavad Gita is compared to the river Ganges. Ganges water is so pure that it can purify even the asses and cows. But anyone who, disregarding the pure Ganges, wishes to be purified instead by the filthy water flowing in a drain cannot be successful. Similarly, one can, one, can, one can successfully attain pure knowledge of the Absolute only by hearing from the pure Absolute Himself. In this verse it is clearly said that those who are averse to the Supreme Personality of Godhead speculate with their imperfect senses about the nature of the Absolute Truth. The formless Brahman conception, however, can be received only by oral reception and not by personal experience. Knowledge is therefore acquired by oral reception. It is confirmed in the Vedanta Sutra, Shastra Yonit Vat. One has, one has to acquire pure knowledge from the authorized scriptures. So-called speculative arguments about the Absolute Truth are therefore useless. The actual identity of the living entity in its consciousness, which is always present while the living entity is awake, dreaming, or in deep sleep. Even in deep sleep, he can perceive by consciousness whether he is happy or distressed. Thus, when consciousness is displayed through the medium of the subtle and gross material bodies, it is covered. But when the consciousness is purified in Krishna consciousness, one becomes free from the entanglement of repeated birth and death. When uncontaminated, pure knowledge is uncovered from the modes of material nature, the actual identity of the living entity is discovered. He is eternally a servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The process of uncovering is like this. The rays of sunshine are luminous, and the sun itself is also luminous. In the presence of the sun, the rays illuminate just like the sun. But when the sunshine is covered by the spell of a cloud or by maya, then darkness, the imperfection of, the imperfection of perception, begins. Therefore, to get out of the entanglement of the spell of nations, one has to awaken his spiritual consciousness or Christian consciousness in terms of the authorized scriptures. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So clear. Text 29. <clears throat> from, the, <clears throat> from the total energy, the Mahat Tattva, I have manifested the false ego, the modes of material nature, the five material elements, the individual consciousness, the eleven senses, and the material body. The entire universe has come from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Purport The Supreme Lord is described as Mahatpada, which means that the total material energy, known as the Mahatattva, is lying at his lotus feet. The origin or the total energy of the cosmic manifestation is the Mahat Tattva. From the Mahat Tattva, all the other 24 divisions have sprung, namely the 11 senses, including the mind, the five sense objects, the five material elements, and then consciousness, intelligence, and false ego. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the cause of the Mahat Tattva, and therefore in one sense, because everything is an emanation from the Supreme Lord, there is no difference between the Lord and the cosmic manifestation. But at the same time, the cosmic manifestation is different from the Lord. The, Lord, the word Surat is very significant here. Surat means independent. The Supreme Lord is independent, and the individual soul is also independent. Although there is no comparison 
between the two qualities of independence. The living entity is minutely independent and the Supreme Lord is fully independent. As the individual soul has a material body made of five elements and the senses, the Supreme Independent Lord similarly has a gigantic body of the universe. The individual body is temporary. Similarly, the entire universe, which is considered to be the body of the Supreme Lord, is also temporary. And both the individual and universal bodies are products, products of the Mahatattva. One has to understand the differences with intelligence. Everyone knows that his material body has developed from a spiritual spark. And similarly, the universal body has developed from the supreme spark, super soul. As the individual body develops from the individual soul, the gigantic body of the universe develops from the supreme soul. Just as the individual soul has consciousness, the supreme soul is also conscious. But although there is a similarity between the consciousness of the Supreme Soul and the consciousness of the individual soul, the individual soul's consciousness is limited, whereas the consciousness of the Supreme Soul is unlimited. This is described in, the, in Bhagavad Gita 13.3. Chetragyam Chapimam Vidi. The Super Soul is present in every field of activity just as the individual soul is present in the individual body. Both of them are conscious. The difference is that the individual soul is conscious of the individual body only, whereas the super, super soul is conscious of the total number of individual bodies. Text 10. This perfect knowledge can be achieved by a person who is already engaged in devotional service with faith, steadiness, and full detachment, and who is always absorbed in thought of the Supreme. He is aloof from material association. Purport. The atheistic, mystic practitioner of yoga cannot understand this perfect knowledge. Only persons who engage in the practical activities of devotional service in full Krishna consciousness can become absorbed in full samadhi. It is possible for them to see and understand the actual fact of the entire cosmic manifestation and its cause. It is clearly stated here that this is not possible to understand for one who has not developed devotional service in full faith. The word samahitatma, the words samahitatma and samadhi are synonymous. Text 31 My dear respected mother, I have already described the path of understanding the absolute truth by which one can come to understand the real truth of matter and spirit and their relationship. 32. Philosophical research culminates in understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. After achieving this understanding, when one becomes free from the material modes of nature, he attains the stage of devotional service, either by devotional service directly or by philosophical research. One has to find the same destination, which is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Purport. It is said in Bhagavad Gita that after many, many lives of philosophical research, the wise man ultimately comes to the point of knowing that Vasudeva, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is everything, and therefore he surrenders unto him. Such serious students in philosophical research are rare because they are very great souls. If by philosophical research one cannot come to the point of understanding the Supreme Person, then his task is not finished. 
His search and knowledge is still to be continued until he comes to the point of understanding the Supreme Lord in devotional service. The opportunity for direct touch with the Personality of God it is given in Bhagavad Gita where it is, where it is also said that those who take to, to other processes, namely the processes of philosophical speculation and mystic yoga practice, have much trouble. After many, many years of much trouble, a yogi or wise philosopher may come to him, but his path is very troublesome, whereas the path of devotional service is easy for everyone. One can achieve the result of wise philosophical speculation simply by discharging devotional service, and unless one reaches the point of understanding the Supreme Personal the Personality of Godhead by his mental speculation, all his research work is said to be simply a labor of love. The ultimate destination of the wise philosopher is to merge in the impersonal Brahman. But that Brahman is the effulgence of the Supreme Person. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 1427, Brahmano hi pratishtaham amritasya vyavyasya cha. I am the basis of the impersonal Brahman, which is indestructible and is the supreme bliss. The Lord is the supreme reservoir of all pleasure, including Brahman pleasure. Therefore, one who has unflinching faith in the Supreme Personality of Godhead is said to be already realized in Brahm impersonal Brahman and Paramatma. Text 33 A single object, a single object is appreciated differently by different senses due to its having different qualities. Similarly, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is one, but according to different scriptural injunctions, he appears to be different. Purport. It appears that by following the path of Jnana Yoga, or empiric philosophical speculation, one reaches the impersonal Brahman, whereas by executing devotional service in Krishna consciousness, one enriches his faith and devotion to the Personality of Godhead. But it is stated here that both Bhakti Yoga and Jnana Yoga are meant for reaching the same destination, the Personality of Godhead. By the process of Jnana Yoga, the same Personality of Godhead appears to be impersonal. As the same object appears to be different when perceived by different senses, the same Supreme Lord appears to be impersonal by mental speculation. A hill appears cloudy from a distance, and one who does not know may speculate that the hill is a cloud. Actually, it is not a cloud. It is a big hill. One has to learn from authority that the sight of the cl a cloud is not actually a cloud, but a hill. If one makes a little more progress, then instead of a cloud, he sees the hill and something green. When one actually approaches the hill, he will see many varieties. Another example is in perceiving milk. When we see milk, we see that it is white. When we taste it, it appears that milk is very palatable. When we touch milk, it appears very cold. When we smell milk, it appears to have a very good flavor. And when we hear, we can understand that it is called milk. <laughs> <laughs> Perceiving milk with different senses, we say that it's something white, something very delicious, something very aromatic, and so on. Actually, it is milk. <clears throat> Similarly, those who are trying to find the Supreme Godhead by mental speculation may approach the bodily effulgence or the impersonal Brahman, and those who are trying to find the Supreme Godhead by yoga practice may find him as the localized super-soul, but those who are directly trying to approach the Supreme Truth by practice of bhakti-yoga can see him face-to-face -face 
as the Supreme Person. Ultimately, the Supreme Person is the destination of all different processes. The fortunate person who, by following the principles of scriptures, becomes completely purified of all material contamination, surrenders unto the Supreme Lord as everything, just as one can appreciate the real taste of milk with the tongue and not with the eyes, nostrils, or ears. One can similarly appreciate the Absolute Truth perfectly and with all relishable pleasure, only through one path, devotional service. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Bhaktya Mam Abhijanati. If one wants to understand the Absolute Truth in perfection, he must take to devotional service. Of course, no one can understand the Absolute Truth in all perfection. That is not possible for the infinitesimal living entities. But the highest point of understanding by the living entity is reached by discharge of devotional service, not otherwise. By following various scriptural paths, one may come to the impersonal effulgence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The transcendental pleasure derived from merging with or understanding the impersonal Brahman is very extensive because Brahman is ananta. Tad Brahmanishkalam anantam. Brahmananda is unlimited. But that unlimited pleasure can only be surpassed can also be surpassed. That is the nature of the transcendence. The unlimited can be surpassed also, and that higher platform is Krishna. When one deals directly with Krishna, the mellow and the humor relished by reciprocation of devotional service is incomparable, even with the pleasure derived from the transcendental Brahman. Prabodhananda Saraswati therefore says that Kaivalya, the Brahman pleasure, is undoubtedly very great and is appreciated by many philosophers. But to a devotee who has understood how to derive pleasure from engaging, uh, exchanging devotional service with the Lord, this unlimited of Brahman appears to be hellish. One should try, therefore, to transcend even the Brahman pleasure in order to approach the position of dealing with Krishna face to face. As the mind is the center of all the activities of the senses, Krishna is called the master of the senses, Rishikesha. The process is to fix the mind on Rishikesha, or Krishna, as Maharaj Ambarish did. Savai manak Krishna padara vindayo. Bhakti is the basic principle. <coughs> bhakti is the basic principle of all processes. Without bhakti, neither jnana yoga nor astanga yoga can be successful. And unless one approaches Krishna, the principles of self-realization have no ultimate destination. Text 34 through 36. By performing fruitive activities and sacrifices, by distributing charity, by performing austerities, by studying various literatures, by conducting philosophical research, by controlling the mind, by subduing the senses, by accepting the renounced order of life, and by performing the prescribed duties of one's social order, by performing the different divisions of yoga practice, by performing devotional service, and by exhibiting the process of devotional service containing the symptoms of both attachment and detachment, by understanding the science of self-realization, and by developing a strong sense of detachment, one who is expert in understanding the different processes of self-realization realizes the Supreme Personality of Godhead as He is represented in the material world as well as in transcendence. Purport. As it is stated in the previous verse, one has to follow the principles of the scriptures. There are different prescribed duties for persons in the different social and spiritual orders. Here it is stated that performance of fruitive activities and sacrifices 
and distribution of charity are activities meant for persons who are in the whole householder order of society. There are four orders of the social system, brahmacharya, grihastha, vanaprastha, and sannyas. For the grihasthas, or householders, performance of sacrifices, distribution of charity, and action according to prescribed duties are especially recommended. Similarly, Haribo, Nitya, Hare Krishna. For the grihasthas or householders, performance of sacrifices, distribution of charity and action according to prescribed duties are especially recommended. Similarly, austerity, study of Vedic literature and philosophical research are meant for the vanaprastas or retired persons. Study of the Vedic literature from the bona fide spiritual master is meant for the brahmacharya or student. Atmendriya jaya control of the mind and taming of the senses is meant for persons in the renounced order of life. All these, all these different activities are prescribed for different persons so that, so that they may be elevated to the platform of self-realization and from there to Krishna consciousness, devotional service. The words bhakti yogena chaiva hi mean that whatever is to be performed as described in verse 34, whether yoga or sacrifice or fruitive activity or study of Vedic literature or philosophical research or acceptance of the renounced order of life, it is to be executed in devotional service. <coughs> the words chaiva hi, according to Sanskrit grammar, indicate that one must perform all these activities mixed with devotional service. Otherwise, such activities will not produce any fruit. Any prescribed activity must be performed for the sake of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, yat karoshi, yadish nasi, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you sacrifice, whatever austerities you undergo, and whatever charities you give, the result should be given to the Supreme Lord. The word eva is added, indicating that one must execute activities in such a way. Unless one adds devotional service to all activities, he cannot achieve the desired result. But when bhakti yoga is prominent in every activity, then the ultimate goal is sure. One has to approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna as it is stated in Bhagavad Gita. After many, many births, one approaches the Supreme Person, Krishna, and surrenders unto Him, knowing that He is everything. Also in Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Bhaktadam Yagyatapasam For anyone who is undergoing rigid austerity, or for anyone performing different kinds of sacrifices, the beneficiary is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the proprietor of all planets and He is the friend of every living soul. The words Dharmano Bhaya Chinena mean that, bhakti, that mean that the Bhakti Yoga process contains two symptoms, namely attachment for the Supreme Lord and detachment from all material affinities. There are two symptoms of advancement in the process of devotional service, just as there are two processes taking place while eating. A hungry man feels strength and satisfaction from eating, and at the same time he gradually becomes detached from eating anymore. Similarly, with the execution of devotional service, real knowledge develops and one becomes detached from all material activities. In no other activity but devotional service is there such detachment from matter and attachment for the Supreme. There are nine different processes to increase this attachment to the Supreme Lord. Hearing, chanting, remembering, worshipping, serving the Lord, making friendship, 
praying, offering everything, and serving the lotus feet of the Lord. The processes for increasing detachment from material affinities are explained in verse 36. One can achieve elevation to the higher planetary systems like the heavenly kingdom by executing one's prescribed duties and by performing sacrifices. When one is transcendental to such desires because of accepting the renounced order of life, he can understand the Brahman feature of the Supreme. And when one is able to see his real constitutional position, he sees all other processes and becomes situated in the stage of pure devotional service. At that time, he can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan. Understanding of the Supreme Person is called Atma Tattva Avabodhina, which means understanding of one's real constitutional position. If one actually understands one's constitutional position as an eternal servitor of the Supreme Lord, he becomes detached from the service of the material world. Everyone engages in some sort of service. If one does not know one's constitutional position, one engages in the service of his personal gross body or his family, society, or country. But as soon as one is able to see his constitutional position, the word swadrik means one who is able to see. He becomes detached from such material service and engages himself in devotional service. As long as one is in the modes of material nature and is performing the prescribed duties in the scriptures, he can be elevated to higher planetary systems where the predominating deities are material representations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, like the Sun God, the Moon God, the Air God, Brahma, and Lord Shiva. All the different demigods are material representations of the Supreme Lord. By material activities, one can approach only such demigods as stated in Bhagavad Gita 9.25, Yanti Deva Bhartad Devan, those who are attached to the demigods and who perform the prescribed duties can approach the abodes of the demigods. In this way, one can go to the planet of the Pitas or forefathers. Similarly, one who fully understands the real position of his life adopts devotional service and realizes the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 37 My dear mother, I have explained to you the process of devotional service and its identity in four different social divisions. I have explained to you as well how eternal time is chasing the living entities although it is imperceptible to them. Purport The process of Bhakti Yoga, devotional service, is the main river flowing down towards the sea of the Absolute Truth. And all other processes mentioned are just like tributaries. Lord Kapila is summarizing the importance of the process of devotional service. Bhakti Yoga, as described before, is divided into four divisions, three in the material modes of nature and one in transcendence, which is untinged by the modes of material nature. Devotional service mixed with the modes of material nature is a means for material existence, whereas devotional service without desires for fruit of result and without attempts for empirical philosophical research is pure transcendental devotional service. Text 38. There are varieties of material existence for the living entity according to the work he performs in ignorance or forgetfulness of his real identity. My dear mother, if anyone enters into that forgetfulness, he is unable to understand where his movements will end. Purport. Once one enters into the continuation of material existence, 
it is very difficult to get out. <laughs> Therefore, the Supreme Personality of Godhead comes Himself or sends His bona fide representative and He leaves behind scriptures like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam so that the living entities hovering in the darkness of nations may take, a may take advantage of the instructions, the saintly persons and the spiritual masters and thus be freed. Unless the living entity receives the mercy of the saintly persons, the spiritual master or Krishna, it is not possible for him to get out of the darkness of material existence. By his own endeavor, it is not possible. Text 39 Lord Kapiladev continued, This instruction is not meant for the envious, nor the agnostics, or for persons who are unclean in their behavior, nor is, nor it is for hypocrites, or for persons who are proud of material possessions. Text 40 It is not to be instructed to persons who are too greedy and too attached to family life, nor to persons who are non-devotees or who are envious of the devotees and of the Personality of Godhead. Purport Persons who are always planning to do harm to other living entities are not eligible to understand Krishna consciousness and cannot enter into the realm of transcendental loving service to the Lord. Also, there are so-called disciples who become submissive to a spiritual master most artificially with an ulterior motive. They also cannot understand what Krishna consciousness or devotional service is. Persons who, due to being initiated by another sect of religious faith, do not find devotional service as the common platform for approaching the Supreme Personality of Godhead also cannot understand Krishna consciousness. We have experienced that some students come to join us, but because of being biased in some particular type of faith, they leave our camp and become lost in the wilderness. Actually, Krishna consciousness is not a sectarian religious faith. I'll repeat that. Actually, Krishna consciousness is not a sectarian religious faith. It is a teaching process for understanding the Supreme Lord and our relationship with Him. Anyone can join this movement without prejudice, but unfortunately, there are persons who feel differently. It is better, therefore, not to instruct the science of Krishna consciousness to such persons. I, I want to add a comment there. Uh, since I started doing this every day, reading just the purports for an hour in front of devotees, or even to myself, I've noticed that the devotees who come and stay regularly and don't go away quickly, they're in this category of pure devotees. I take the dust from all of your feet. Hare Krishna. I want to instruct this. I want to say this. But it's very important. It's very important. We have experience that some students come to join us, but because of being biased in some particular type of faith, they leave our camp and become lost in the wilderness. Actually, Christian consciousness is not a sectarian religious faith. It is a teaching process for understanding the Supreme Lord and our relationship with Him. Anyone can go and join this movement without prejudice. But unfortunately, there are persons who feel differently. It is better, therefore, not to instruct the science of Christian consciousness to such persons. So this hearing that we're doing, this is intense devotional service. It filters out. Even before they come in the door, they're already filtered out. Krishna's like going, hey, over there, come on, inside. Generally materialistic persons are after some name, fame, and material gain. So if someone takes to Krishna consciousness for those reasons, he will never be able to understand this philosophy. 
Such persons take to religious principles as a se- social decoration. <laughs> They admit themselves into some cultural uh, institution for the sake of name only, especially in this age. Such persons also cannot understand the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Even if one is not greedy for material possessions, but is too attached to family life, he also cannot understand Krishna consciousness. Superficially, such persons are not very greedy for material possessions, but they are, but they are too, ta- too attached to wife, children, and family improvement. When a person is not contaminated by the above-mentioned faults, yet that the ultimate issue is not interested in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or if he is a non-devotee, he also cannot understand the philosophy of Christian consciousness. In, this is text 41. Instruction should be given to the faithful devotees, who, who, the faithful devotee, who is respectful to the spiritual master, non-envious, friendly to all kinds of living entities, and eager to render service with faith and sincerity. That's the formula, in a nutshell. This instruction, 42, this instruction should be imparted by the spiritual master to persons who have taken the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be more dear than anything, who are not envious of anyone, who are perfectly cleansed, and who have developed detachment for that which is outside the purview of Krishna consciousness. Purport. In the beginning, no one can be elevated to the highest stage of devotional service. Here, Bhakta means one who does not hesitate to accept the reformatory processes for becoming a bhakta. In order to become a devotee of the Lord, one has to accept a spiritual master and inquire from him about how to progress in devotional service. To serve a devotee, to chant the holy name according to a certain counting method, to worship the deity, to hear Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita from a realized person, and to live in a sacred place where devotional service is not disturbed are the first out of 64 devotional activities for making progress in devotional service. One who has accepted these five chief activities is called a devotee. One must be prepared to offer the necessary respect and honor to the spiritual master. He should not be unnecessarily envious of his god-brothers, rather if a god-brother is more enlightened and advanced in Krishna consciousness, one should accept him as almost equal to the spiritual master. And one should be happy to see such god-brothers advance in Krishna consciousness. A devotee should always be very kind to the general public in instructing Krishna consciousness because that is the only solution for getting out of the clutches of maya. That is really humanitarian work. <laughs> for it is the way to show mercy to other people who need it very badly. The word shushu shibiritaya shushu sha biritaya indicates a person who faithfully engages in serving the spiritual master. One should give personal service and all kinds of comforts to the spiritual master. A devotee who, do, who does so is also a bona fide candidate for taking this instruction. The word Bahir Jata Viraghaya means a person who has developed detachment from external and internal material propensities. Not only is he detached from activities which are not connected to Krishna consciousness, but he should be internally averse to the material way of life. Such a person must be non-envious and should think of the welfare of all living entities, not only of the human beings, but living entities other than human beings. The word shuchaye means one who is cleansed both externally and internally. To become actually cleansed externally and internally, one should chant the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna or Vishnu, constantly. 
the word diyatam means that knowledge of Krishna consciousness the word diyatam means that knowledge of Krishna consciousness should be offered by the spiritual master the spiritual master does not accept a disciple who is not qualified he should not be a professional and should not accept disciples for monetary gains the bona fide spiritual master must see the bona fide qualities of a person who is, whom he is going to initiate an unworthy person should not be initiated the spiritual master should train his disciple in such a way so that in the future only the supreme personality of Godhead will be the dearmost goal of his life in these two verses the qualities of a devotee are fully explained one who has actually developed all the qualities listed in these verses is already elevated to the post of a devotee. If one has not developed all these qualities, he still has to fulfill these conditions in order to become a perfect devotee. Text 43 Anyone who meditates upon me with faith and affection, who hears and chants about me, surely goes back home back to Godhead. Srila Kapila Dev Ki Jai. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the third canto, 32nd chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Entanglement in Fruitive Activities. Okay. We will turn it over to you for reflections and uh, whatever. Anything that hits your mind, made an impression. Okay, Hannah, go for it. My reflection is, is that our envious, our enviousness of others, uh, it's rooted in in envy of Krishna. If we're envious of others, it's because we still are envious of Krishna, and if we love others. We love Krishna. Pretty good. Almost you got it right. It was close. You were doing really good, except for the right last part. Okay. It's not if you love others, you love Krishna. Love but if you love Krishna, automatically you love others. Right? It's like when you put food into the stomach, the whole body becomes nourished. If you try to, you know, if, the, if I'm thirsty, right? So if I put my finger in the glass of water and I wait for it to, you know, no, it's not going to work. You have to put the water in the mouth and then it comes to the, you know, quench the thirst and give energy to the body. But that's a very nice point about if we're envious of others, that means we still have some envy of Krishna. Somebody else besides the hog? <laughs> That's not me. She's trying to read the question online. <laughs> it was Jai Shri. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not lying about me being a Hong. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry, Krishna. <laughs> In the purport, this is Jai Shri. This is Jai Shri. Yes. Okay. Haribol Jai Shri. She's in Hong Kong. She's an oncologist. Hurry, Bo Jai Shri. It's Hannah, I miss you. She was here last year, if some of you may have seen her. All right. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada said, Actually, Krishna consciousness is not a sectarian religious faith. It is a teaching process for understanding the Supreme Lord and our relationship with Him. This is so true. I am always asked by so many non-devotees that... Why you practice something Indian? <laughs> this is the perfect answer to the question. Yes. That is the reason uh, mm. I find that the practice of Krishna consciousness is such an amazing process. It's full of bliss and satisfaction. Very nice. Thank you so much for that realization. I appreciate it very much. And the fact is, what's the difference? What's the difference between a sectarian religion and an, an actual religion. What makes this movement not a sectarian religion? What makes everyone it different? Is, what? Everyone is welcome. Yeah, I'm sure everyone would 
all the religions would welcome everyone if they could. <laughs> No. Religion is they're the only way. They're no. The only that's the partly. That's we we also say we're the only way, the only truth, the only. Oh, it says it in here. Hold on. <laughs> go for it, Hannah. Go for it. <laughs> now these are symptoms. But there's one. There, he, oh, okay, I'm going to give you. I, I didn't. I don't want to tease you. The fact is that this is the only religion in the world who has a clear conception of the form of God. And therefore, when it, it has the potency or the potential to unite all people, just like we, we see persons in this room from all different kinds of countries, all kinds of you know, social you know, places, relig different religions, born into different religions, but because if you don't have a personal conception of God, then you can't reunite everybody around it. If it's an impersonal conception of God, then it's easy for them to say, we have our God and you have your God. Because there's no way to tell. What's the difference? What's, what, what's the, what, where's the concrete conception? But this, this section was so clear about what are the different realizations of God, the different... How, how Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan realization are all realizations of the same person, but, but from different angles of vision. So because Krishna consciousness goes right to the source, to the Supreme Personality of God, who is the source of Paramatma, <coughs> or the, what they call the Holy Spirit, in Christianity it would be the Holy Spirit inside, or the Brahman realization, in impersonalism, because he's the source of both those, you can come in contact with Brahman realization and not understand God fully. But if you understand the personality of Godhead fully, then you automatically understand the other parts. Like, do you remember the example? The, 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 the mountain, from a great distance, it looks like a cloud. And then you get closer, you can see it's a form. And you get closer, then you see all the details, everything in detail. But the same, the subject is the same. The person is observing the mountain, same mountain, but from different angles of vision. So the Krishna Consciousness Movement has the potency to unite everyone because it is focusing on the eternal form, the original form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead which is the source of all other forms and all other energies and everything. Vasudeva, Sarvamiti, Samahatma, Siddhura Labaha. Yes, Bhaktijan, go ahead. Go for it. Here. Kind of Wait. Uh, I was coming over here today. Bhaktijan is the master electrician and he's become the master of something else. <laughs> well, I, I was as I was coming over here today. I didn't know what we were going to read, but I just got this feeling. I was saying, thinking about you know, I've been through Christian Christianity, different other faiths, and I just got this uh, this just this sense that Jesus was telling me in the cars, like you you know, you're not betraying me. Good point. To become. Krishna conscious mm -hmm. and I think a lot of Christians feel that they're going to turn their back on Jesus when yeah. when they're yeah. but I got I just had this this it just kind of came to me he's like no you're not betraying me to become Krishna conscious so nice. that was awesome yeah, very good. thank you Bhakti John very much And the translation of... Yeah. She's got a document what he said from, from the book. <laughs> oh, a is it okay if I repeat it? Or? You must. Okay. You must. If you don't... <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
these are verities of material existence for the living entity according to the work he performs in ignorance or forgetfulness of his real identity. Uh, my dear ma mother, if anyone enters into the forgetfulness, he is unable to understand where his movement his movements will end. I think if we we can't truly lose our real identity in Krishna consciousness. Exactly. Right. Precisely. Well put. I want to I want to share with you something that I've learned over this last few years. We, we, there it is. Thank you. When traveling around, because I look the way I do and I am the way I am, I tend to talk to people and people tend to talk to me. It's just the way it is. So uh, when they do ask me, I was I was in a mall in in the UK, and this one you know security guard, small female, this big. And she was very nice. And she said, are you a Buddhist? You know? I said, no. She said, what are you? I said, I'm Christian conscious. Oh, Christian conscious. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so, yeah, so then, so then I said, no, no, Krishna conscious. Oh, what's Krishna? And I said, well, you know, Krishna is Sanskrit name. And if you derive the Sanskrit name to the next etymological I didn't use the word because it was over her head etym etymological but it, it, it goes to the Greek Christo which goes to the Aramic Christa which goes to the English Christ and she went like this oh really <laughs> and it's like it just got it immediately because it's the same name it's just and then I said you know, we call this, you know, chair, and then in another language you call it siya or whatever. It's the same thing. So if you use this logic when you meet people who are skeptical, especially Christians, and you show them Krishna, Krista, Christo, Christ. Same name. And then in Aramic language, the original name of Jesus is Jesus of the Christ. Just like we, we have a family name, all, when, you all, when all your forms, you fill it out, what's your family name, what's your surname, what's your given name, like that. So Jesus of the Christ. So that word Christ is a name of Krishna. It means the anointed one, the holy one, and it's Krishna. Something? Mm -hmm. The hog is back. Okay, so... I just had a realization from everybody else's realizations. <laughs> over the past two days, the points we just discussed, I've heard over four people in this room talking about the same thing. And everybody... Uh, you bringing it up and back to John bringing it up and Christine bringing it up it shows me that Krishna is, is in everyone's heart and yes. everyone's heart equally it's not that he's in one person's more than another and it's so amazing uh, again you got it right right until the end dang. You almost talk just enough, <laughs> but you're getting really good at it. No, it, it isn't. It isn't that Krishna is different in the heart. He's the same Krishna in the heart, but we have different capacities to to see or to understand him, and therefore he manifests himself differently according to the person's qualification, according to the person's desire for relationship. Etc. Etc. So there's a difference, and there's no difference. Both. There's no difference. Krishna is Krishna, but he shows himself in different forms, and this is the this is the reason why Krishna has so many forms, because there's so many devotees who want to see him and want to love him in different forms, and so he he appears to them according to how they want to see him. So what would you say to people who say, well, I only want to see Christ.
Krishna and uh, the impersonal. Then that's the, what they get. We say fine. So we don't, we don't have an argument with but, the impersonalists. No, we don't. We don't have any arguments with the impersonalists. We may explain to them that that won't give you the full love that you're looking for. But you don't tell them you can't go there or you don't go there. But we have to explain to them what it actually is. And that's why Christian consciousness is so unique. Because as we've been reading the last couple of days, these, this summarization of Kapila Dev, <laughs> of the process of devotional service in this last chapter was so clear, crystal clear. You can't make a person be more advanced than they are. They, everyone starts from Krishna consciousness from where they are. We just have to, you know, explain the goal and, and explain things gradually and let them come. Like right at the end it says, shouldn't be explained to one who envious or one who's not friendly or one who, you know, like that. But one who is in, innocent but not fully aware then we have to be kind and we have to explain very clearly it's it's not so difficult it's simple philosophy but it has to be understood clearly and explained clearly Prabhupada told us even if you're not a philosopher even if you're not a philosopher if you just repeat these purports learn to repeat the purports the ideas even if it's in your own words that's fine that's also a part of realization and that's why Prabhupada repeats the same things, but in different, just a little different way, little little different way, explained to a little different way. And if you keep hearing, all the pieces put come together, and then you can repeat it. And we don't have to go after Maya, the conch shell of Maya. I can't think that means we're supposed to stop. Hare Krishna, wait, Guru Bhakti, go for it. Wait, wait for the, wait for the train to go. <coughs> so it, in text 26 there's a, there's a line it says if someone desires at all to merge into the existence of the supreme he has to execute devotional service yes. so is there a danger that we execute devotional service we can become impersonalist and what is the what, is the, what do we have to look out for and, and how is it that someone who executes devotional service how do they get sidetracked to what is the, the, the yeah. it means that the essence of bhakti is devotion right so you can't really have devotion for something impersonal you can't love the sky I mean you can like it and you can you know but you, you, you know, you can't dress it. <laughs> Prabhupada said, if you want to serve the sky by dressing it, you'd use up all the, you know, all the cloth, you know, factories in the world, and then some, you know. But what he means by this is that just like in any activity, if you want to get good at it, you have to be devoted to it. So that's the principle. So that principle reflected into the material world becomes devotion to an activity, a particular activity. I mean, you couldn't have been a doctor unless you were devoted to it. It would not be possible. Go through austerities you went through, especially Harlem. <laughs> do your, you do your, anyway. So that's what it means. And it also means that because the living entity is very tiny and the material energy is very great and Krishna is unlimited, there's always an opportunity for the individual independence of the soul, which is infinitesimal by nature or by quality, but I mean I mean by quantity rather, but by quality the same as Krishna. There's always an opportunity for the soul to fall down or be attracted to the material energy. And that's what happens. They're not careful. They don't follow strictly. They don't take they're not as serious, they're not so serious. That's what it means to be serious. Actually, Prabhupada told us that the symptom of one who is serious is the attentiveness to detail in all that they do. That's a serious person. So if you perform devotional service according to the instructions in the Shastra and the spiritual master 
and the devotees who are practicing uh, carefully and attentively, then you won't fall down. So even, for instance, the example is given of the Kumaras. They were born yogis. And they were, at the beginning of the universe, they were impersonalists in first. But as soon as they, but they weren't mayavadis. The difference between the mayavadi and the brahmavadi is that the mayavadi has come to the conclusion that Krishna's form is maya. They take anything with form to be false or maya. But the four kamaras were advanced in spiritual understanding, as was Shukadev Goswami. That's why he didn't come out of the womb for so long. But as soon as they saw Vishnu's form and smelled the fragrance of the tulsi leaves offered to his feet, they immediately became pure devotees. Immediately, because they were so advanced spiritually. So the Brahmavadis, before they come to Krishna, before they've heard about Krishna, before they've come in contact with Krishna, may be attached to the the impersonal conception. But as soon as they come in contact with the personal conception, they immediately become attracted and attached. But the Mayavadi, opposite. Therefore, we shouldn't actually explain at least the intimate details of Krishna consciousness philosophy to the Mayavadi. We should avoid them, actually. But innocent persons who are may not have understood that God's a person, only out of innocence, out of not having come contact, then we should explain from the beginning the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Is that clear? Okay. I'm going to stop here now. Kapila Dev Ki Jai. Deva Huti, the most intelligent woman in the world. Ki Jai. Gaur Premanandi, Hari Hari Bol, Srimad Bhagavatam.